This is the story of Rip Van Winkle. Many years ago, at the foothills of the Catskill Mountains in New York State, was a small village. In the village lived a simple, good-natured fellow named Rip Van Winkle. He was a kind neighbor, ready to help anyone. Everyone in the village liked him. The children of the village shouted with joy whenever they saw him because he played with them. He taught them to fly kites and shoot marbles and told them long stories. The only problem with Rip was that he was very lazy. He did not work on his own farm and just idled away his time. His fences were falling to pieces. His cow was going astray. Weeds grew on his farm. Rip's constant companion was his dog named Wolf. To avoid work, he would walk away into the forest with his dog Wolf. One day, Rip Van Winkle, tired of his mother insisting on him getting a job, ran up a mountain with his favorite companion, his dog, and his gun. He reached the top, crossed the stream, went to a spot where nobody ever came, and sat down panting. He had never had so much exercise in all his life. He was just getting back his breath when he heard someone call his name. Strange, nobody ever comes here, and surely no one that I know, thought Rip Van Winkle. He turned to see a funny-looking man carrying a big barrel. The funny-looking man said, Please help me carry this barrel to my mates a little below the stream. Rip Van Winkle had climbed so far up the mountain to avoid work. Here was a man asking for help. He first decided to refuse, but then thought, Let's help the poor chap, then I can come and rest. So he and the funny-looking man walked down to a cave in the mountain below the stream. There Rip Van Winkle saw many other funny-looking men. All of them were playing the game of nine pins. They ignored him. As soon as the barrel was placed in the ground, the men pulled out mugs, dipped into the barrel, and drank. It was wine. Rip Van Winkle, too, dipped a mug in the barrel and drank the wine. It tasted good. He thought he should have one more mug, then another and another, until he found the room swinging in front of him. Rip Van Winkle went to sleep. When he awoke, he saw that all the funny-looking men had gone. He called out to his dog, but there was no response. He could not believe he had slept the whole day and night. He got up. His joints ached. He picked up his gun. Instead of the clean, well-oiled piece, he found the barrel rusted and the lock falling off. He threw it away. As he started trudging back home, he saw the village down below, which seemed somehow changed. When he entered the village, he saw new faces. All of them looked at him and rubbed their chins. Seeing them do this, Rick Van Winkle did the same. To his astonishment, he found he had grown a foot-long beard overnight. Rip Van Winkle was puzzled. He believed that he knew most of the village folks, but did not see anyone that he knew around. This was the same village where he could see the mountains and the streams. The children made fun of him, running behind him and pulling his beard. Rip Van Winkle stopped by a place where there had been a school and asked the crowd that had gathered, where is Schooner the schoolmaster? Somebody said, oh, Schooner, he went to war in 63 and never came back. And damn hell, asked Rip Van Winkle. He died 18 years back, said another voice in the crowd. Rip Van Winkle thought he was going mad. Had he slept all these years on the mountain? Finally, Rip Van Winkle asked, Does anyone here remember Rip Van Winkle? A very old woman said, Yes, he was my lazy son. He went up the mountains 21 years back, but never returned. His dog came back without him. Rip Van Winkle was overjoyed. He said, Mother, it is me, Rip Van Winkle. Don't you recognize me? Oh, my son, it really you? Is it really you? Where have you been all this while? Mother and son hugged each other. 
Rip Van Winkle had indeed slept for 21 years.